在传统的金融市场里面呢，像巴菲特跟索罗斯，他们的地位是受人膜拜，像神一样的。而在区块链跟虚拟货币的社群里面呢，也有一位 V 神。来自于俄罗斯的 Vitalik， 他今年才二十五岁，被称为是金童。他小学三年级那一年进入了天才的自由班，被认定他的计算能力是一般人的两倍。大学辍学之后呢，他全力开发以太坊跟区块链的技术，在世界上募集了两千万的美元来帮他完成梦想。今天我们赶快来打电话给他，看看这样子的天才青年他到底在做些什么，怎么改变世界。You have people that are working remotely for companies in developed countries, and they're getting paid, and they want to move that money back to Africa. And cryptocurrencies are just the easiest way for them to do that. 打电话给他喽。Do you think that learning Chinese is one of the most difficult experience that you have? It's hard. It's also in some ways easier because. Like if you try to learn French or German, and you try like actually speaking like French or German to people, as、yeah. soon as they realize that you're not speaking perfectly, they、okay. they just switch to speaking English to you, and they think they're doing you a favor. So it's like actually not possible to get any any actual practice because like everyone who speaks French or German just speaks English as well. So there's like ways that Chinese is even easier sometimes. You're from Russia, right? And、yes. um, would you think Russian is even more difficult to pick up compared to Chinese?、Can、It's both easier and more difficult, right? So, like, Russian is nice because it has an alphabet that actually makes a lot of sense, and it even makes much more sense than the English one. But the words and the grammar are very complicated, and every word has like 20 different endings, and so you have to kind of work your way around that. Whereas with Chinese, you have to like learn these two thousand characters, and then <laughs> they look, they kind of look like complicated squigglies. But on the other hand, the grammar is really nice and simple. So. Oh, did you say Chinese grammar nice and simple? Compared compared to Russian, yes, definitely. Oh, compared to Russian, wow. <laughs> well, compared to good to know that. Good to know that. Good to know that. You drop out from college after eight months. That's how、yes. I remember. So,、mm -hmm. do you think that our traditional education system is failing, or not enough, to the very least? Uh, it's that de it definitely does some things well. There's definitely things that it fails at as well. Like the one, the eight months that I was in university, I feel like I learned a lot. But then、mm -hmm. I stayed in touch with my friends who didn't drop out. And they all said that after the first year, they didn't learn that much. Yeah, and then there's just a lot of things that you can only learn about on the internet. So.、Hmm. You once、yeah. said, and I quote, "You think the most important thing is to is to learn how to learn." Yeah, yeah, learning how to learn is good. Can you explain explain more? What does that mean? Um, like. There's a kind of learning which is kind of learning very specific things, and there's a kind of learning that's kind of deeper and gets you more understanding about kind of the structure of things and how things fit fit together in ways that you know, make start to make more and more sense over time and help you to understand like not just the one thing that you're learning right now, but also、um, a, a lot of other things in the future. So once you start kind of seeing connections and connections between different fields, connections between different topics, there's a lot of、uh, thing, well, things that you can kind of start figuring out and、uh, about how the world fits together. And once you have that, then a lot of things become more understandable. And yes. Are you saying before that you shouldn't drop out? <laughs> um. Hmm. I mean, I think you should drop out of college if you have something better to do. And if you don't have something better to do, then I mean, sticking there is is fine and safe too. You have almost 900k followers on Twitter, and every move, every statement,、um, you catch a lot of eyeballs from international cryptocurrency、uh, community. Does that affect you personally in any way? 
Uh, definitely does. And there's definitely a lot of pressure because like it's clear that just a lot of people are watching the space and expect a lot of things out of it. And there's a lot of expectations that we have to live up to. Are you uh, getting used to it, the whole media attention, Slightly. the public attention thing? Slightly. <laughs> Sorry, saying. Does it cause trouble initially to you? Yep, I think so. yeah, yep. In what way? Um, I mean, I think the worst part is yeah. just like not the worst part is probably just walking outside and getting people stopping you for pictures once every kilometer. That definitely oh, happens. That is that is uh. scary. Can you explain the whole thing, the thing of uh, Ethereum and the DApp um, smart contract in layman's terms, so a 60-year-old woman can understand what is it about? Uh, sure. I mean, I'm so I personally, I'm so so looking forward to your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess like. First of all, right, they're like the core idea behind all, a lot of these uh, uh, platforms, applications, and systems this is, is this idea of decentralization that we can build th um, things and systems that allow people to cooperate and work with each other that don't need to have kind of one person in the middle that's controlling the whole thing. Right. So, like, we can. Bank or central government. Yeah, like you can have a, a currency without having a bank issue it. You can have an application without having a developer that sees ever everyone's data and and controls everything that's going on. I visited Africa a few months ago, and I asked uh, some uh, local African community people, what do people use crypto for here in Africa? And the reply they gave was like, the biggest kind of thing that people are using it for in practice right now is just, you have people that are working remotely for companies in developed countries, and they're getting paid, and they want to move that money back to Africa. And cryptocurrencies are just the easiest way for them to do that. Now you might ask, well, haven't we been hearing news articles about remittance companies failing? But like, you're not getting the point. The whole point of crypto is that you don't need these intermediaries, right? Like you don't need a quote remittance company to do remittance. You just you need cryptocurrency and you send it to an address and a local exchange that you can use to just take the cryptocurrency and sell it. Yeah. And people are just doing that. And there's a lot of this kind of activity beneath the surface that is not even getting registered. So I think in the short term, there's a lot of value like that. I mean, you can do this for like currencies, these decentralized applications, managing identities. Like, you can use it for things like just securing data, securing government records. In the future, potentially making making things like voting more secure, though that's a, some, a somewhat more complicated challenge. So, yeah, I mean, the idea basically is that we just create these network, networks that are made up of just thousands, many thousands of people on those computers everywhere around the world. And you have this kind of large number of eyes that's constantly checking all of the data that's being produced in this network and making sure that all of the data is correct and making sure that everyone is agreeing on what data has been published. And you can use this as a platform and you can build a lot of things on top of it. Now we talk about the investment side. You once Twitter tweeted uh, that you still think the whole cryptocurrency investment is highly volatile and you don't suggest you sort of over invested it and mm -hmm. um, you think that the trading platform right now is also very dangerous because it can ma manipulate um, mm -hmm. the rate rate. Do you still feel the same? I mean, I think that proves to be true. But and it's in general, I mean, there's definitely a lot of signs, though, that things have improved a lot in the last uh, one and a half years. Like even just the amount of actual technology that there exists in the, the uh, crypto space has just moved uh, forward so much in the last 18 months that I'm really happy about that. There's just been a huge amount of progress, a huge amount of people working on things. 
um, a lot of the uh, solutions to things like privacy and scalability that did not exist one and a half years ago exist now. So there's a lot of real work being done and a lot of progress happening. So I think like the risks do still exist, but there there has been and there is substance behind it, and there is more and more of that growing. So you still think it should be partial of your investment portfolio instead of you risk it all, kind of. Oh, I definitely don't think people should put 100% of their money into any single thing. In Taiwan, uh, I mean, I like the nature here. Um, nature? You mean the mountain? The, the, the yeah, mountains, parks, all of those things. Yeah. Taiwan seems to do a kind of good job of that. Um, but I am so Canada and Russia has even more of that kind of flavor. And it has a lot well, of other. I guess like the yeah, it does. I mean the the other thing I like about Taiwan is that it's got that and it's fairly close to the cities where people are. So I think that's good. Um I think uh what else? It's got yeah, a lot what of good are you doing here when you're not working. I just like spending time with friends here and you know, at restaurants, at bars? I don't do the bar thing, but like, you know, in other places, sure. You don't drink at all? I drink green tea. <laughs> green tea. All right. Well, we have a lot of great green tea in Taiwan. I hope uh, our staff and me personally can take you to a good green tea store next time. <laughs> Thank you so much. 希望你们喜欢今天的节目，并且从中得到一个全新观点。记得留言、按赞、分享哦。